The Roman Empire stretched from the Atlantic Ocean all the way to the Tigris River. They had a plethora of foes who wanted to bring them down and eventually they would succeed. However, the engineers who helped construct architectural masterpieces will help the legacy of this great empire live on for centuries to come. From massive amphitheaters built in the Middle East to grand aqueducts that delivered water to the people. Here are the most unbelievable Roman places. But first, we'd like to give a quick shout out to this person over here for leaving us this comment. We appreciate your insight and would like to hear your thoughts on future videos. Number 12. La Maison Carré Located in the French city of Nîmes, the Maison Carré translates to the square house and it's one of the best Roman temples left over in modern times. It was dedicated to Gaius Caesar and Lucius Caesar who were adopted sons of Augustus. It's a fine example of Vitruvian architecture and stands about 17 meters high. Completed in the 2nd century AD, it's needed quite a bit of restorations throughout the years and you can tell some of the stones just look a little bit too white for it to be totally authentic. In any case, the temple inspired some buildings which we see in America such as the Virginia State Capitol building which was designed by Thomas Jefferson. However, this version is made of stucco and not marble. It's now a Musée de Beaux-Arts or Fine Arts Museum in France. Number 11. Pont du Gard Pont du Gard is not just a bridge but also an aqueduct. In fact, it's the tallest Roman aqueduct and is also one of the best preserved. This was used to supply water to the Roman colony of Nîmes where the Maison Carré is located. It's a fine example of Roman engineering and rises 160 feet up into the sky. It would have almost been like the Golden Gate Bridge of its time. The aqueducts made it possible for Roman amenities such as fountains, baths and fresh water. In order for the citizens of Nîmes to enjoy this essential resource, over 50,400 tons of limestone were needed and some of the blocks weighed as much as 6 tons. After Rome fell, it was transformed into a toll bridge where crossers would pay a fee to get to the other side of the Gardon River. The famous French philosopher Jean-Jacques Rousseau claimed that it greatly surpasses expectations. Many are still amazed by these aqueducts in modern times and you'll find visitors walking by or even sketching the ruins. Number 10. Gallo-Roman Necropolis It's amazing to think that all across Europe, someone could discover something new about one civilization even though sometimes it can get a little bit eerie. Archaeologists were able to discover hundreds of graves, this time in western France, near a town called Saint. Several bodies were buried with iron shackles around their necks, like we see in this photo. These were actually believed to have been Roman slaves. The burial site is located about 250 meters west of the Saint Amphitheater and possibly a dumping pit for the losers of the gladiatorial battles. This necropolis, like many in the Roman Empire, were constructed outside the city as a burial site and also where cremations were made. Unfortunately, not many artifacts were uncovered, only coins that were left over on the deceased eyes. This was a Roman tradition so the person's spirit could pay the ferryman to transport them across the river that separated the world of the living and the world of the dead. Number 9. Ancient Basra The ancient city of Basra has been mentioned as far back as the 14th century BC in Egyptian documents. Here in this photo, we see the ancient amphitheater that was built by the Romans and is still used today due to its excellent acoustics. The city is located in the country of Syria and was originally built outside the city walls but later on enclosed by a fortress. The theater is constructed out of black basalt in the 1st century AD and can see the maximum of 15,000 people. It was actually one of the biggest arenas ever built by the Romans despite its distance from Rome. The ancient city of Basra was once an extremely important trading destination and was once home to people of all religions. In 2015, people reported that parts were damaged due to political instability in the area. Number 8. Castel San Angelo You might be familiar with this next Roman structure if you've ever played some Assassin's Creed Brotherhood. It was at one point the tallest building in Rome and was even used as a mausoleum for Emperor Hadrian. This leader of Rome constructed many great structures and passed away in his villa in Bailly. His ashes were placed here but much looting of the mausoleum took place when barbarians from the north sacked Rome. Eventually in 410 AD it was transformed into a military fortress and then eventually as a castle for the popes. During the Renaissance period it was utilized as a prison holding notable people such as Giordano Bruno who was executed for his philosophies and theories about the cosmology. Number 7. Tetrapylon this historical site is hanging on by a thread and is under severe threat of being completely wiped off the map. 
Celebrated as the Pearl of Desert, Palmyra, located in Syria, was a thriving trade city along the Silk Road, which traded goods as far away as India. Remnants of this city show what mankind was capable of in the middle of the desert with barely any resources nearby. Temples once stood here for thousands of years. It reached its golden age in 260 AD after the Palmyrian Empire was victorious in battle against the Persians. The empire here displayed unique culture, but artwork and architecture displayed showed influence from the Romans and Greeks. It's hard to tell what's still left over here since Google Maps in the area seem to be a little bit outdated. Here in this photo, we see the tetrapylon that was destroyed in 2017, and here is the Temple of Bel, which was also destroyed in 2015 from civil unrest and looting. Something needs to be done quickly before all the evidence is completely gone. Number 6. Hadrian's Wall The Romans were starting to get tired of wild British barbarians trying to cross their borders, and eventually in AD 122, the Roman Emperor Hadrian built this wall. The wall was constructed out of stone, and every five Roman miles there would be a fortress, which was used to garrison infantry and cavalry units. It's considered to be the largest Roman artifact anywhere in the world, and runs for a total of 73 miles. The height and width of the walls can measure on average 10 feet high to 20 feet high, and would include various ditches. Many historians would also argue that there wasn't a huge threat from the ancient Britons north of the wall, but it was mainly a display of power to solidify the land that was conquered. There was even evidence that the wall was polished and could reflect light as far as 5 miles. Another wall was eventually constructed even further north, known as the Antonine Wall in 142 AD, and further land grabbing continued. Number 5. Roman Theater of Orange Located in Orange, France, this first century theater was an exceptional opera house that was primarily built for the Roman legions who were stationed in Gaul. As the Roman Empire began to have its own political issues, they tend to build more venues dedicated to entertainment in order to distract the people as well. Originally, there was a wooden roof over the theater to protect the spectators from the elements. It's believed that the roof was burnt down during a fire and was never rebuilt. One of the most notable features about this landmark is a large 61-meter wall which would help project the sound so everyone can hear what was going on. It's large enough to seat roughly 10,000 guests and much of it was restored in the 1800s. In modern times, it's still used for performances as a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Number 4. Jardin de la Fontaine The Jardin de la Fontaine is a public park situated in Nîmes and consists of many Roman antique statues as well as fountains. It takes up an area of about 15 hectares of land and located not too far away from the Maison Carré. It's composed of both ancient Roman structures as well as parts that were put there later on in the 18th century. Visitors can get a breath of fresh air around the oak trees here and enjoy the peacefulness of the area. The sanctuary was built near the city's fortifications and was dedicated to Emperor Augustus. Number 3. The Colosseum We might not always think about it, but many historical landmarks have survived incredible circumstances ranging from warfare, natural disasters, and just being extremely old. There is reasons why only one of seven ancient wonders are left standing, and we only see a fraction of the great historical landmarks that once existed on Earth. The Colosseum is a perfect example. It was primarily used for gladiatorial fights and could fit an estimated 87,000 people. It was constructed in the 1st century AD, and it's lucky to exist. In the year 296 AD, lightning struck the wooden floor of the arena, and much of the enormous amphitheater was set ablaze by Mother Nature. If that didn't already seem unlucky enough, lightning struck again but didn't catch on fire. In 455 AD, Rome was completely sacked by the barbarians from the north. Its colossal size kept it from lying in a pile of rubble, but it was relentlessly pillaged for loot. The Colosseum we see today is still only two-thirds of the original structure. Number 2. Circus Maximus the Circus Maximus, or translated into English, the largest circus, was a massive Roman chariot racing stadium located in Rome. It was another venue to distract the Roman sheeple from concerning themselves with politics. Demand for games and spectacles grew rapidly, and this kind of place was better known for racing. It was used in a similar manner to the Colosseum in regards to other events such as gladiatorial fights, beast hunts, athletics, plays, and even the occasional public execution. And number 1. Pompeii the city of Pompeii was once a thriving colony of the Roman Empire until it was completely covered in volcanic ash in 79 AD. The town is located near modern-day Naples and is now one of the best-preserved ancient cities in all of Europe. It was home to amenities such as an amphitheater, a gymnasium, and a complex water system. At its peak, it reached a population of 11,000 people. Some of the inhabitants are still preserved from the very thing that brought their demise. 
This is one of the only places where people were turned into statues. Them and the entire city were buried in ash from Mount Vesuvius' explosion. Currently, it's one of the most popular tourist attractions in Italy, however, it's being damaged quickly from erosion, vandalism, and light exposure. Hey guys, if you haven't noticed already, we're almost at a million subscribers, so remember to smash that subscribe button.